Jeremy Veldman, Brian Hancock, welcome again to Telescope Tips. Once again, talking about some good options for getting started in binocular astronomy. Now we talked about some things in the maybe lower end of your budget. If you're either looking to travel a lot, need something small and portable, or something that uh, you know maybe gives you a little bit better field of view, want to up your budget a little bit, uh, but something that has a combination of good eye relief, uh, good field of view, and then also has the focusing capability. Right. Now, if you're looking to up your game even more in the area of binocular astronomy, maybe you got a little bit more money to spend, what are some other options? Well, you know, I tell you what, Jeremy, you know, you can spend just as much on binoculars as you can on telescopes. So, um, and that's, um, well, that's something else to consider. Do you really want to drop 500, 600, 3,000 on a binocular? When you can get a pretty nice telescope, a telescope is always going to be more versatile. You're always going to be able to use higher magnifications with telescopes than you can with binoculars. So why in the world would you want to take that limited astronomy budget that we all have and splurge it all on a binocular purchase? Right. Um, let's go through some of these more high-end binoculars and maybe we can, maybe we can answer that question. We've got uh, two 10 by 50s here. We already talked about the Oberwerk. This is a, Fu a Fujinon 10 by 50. And the field of view is just about the same. You see the Fujinon, it says the field is uh, 6.3 degrees, and this is 6.4 degrees. But this is $180 binocular, and this is over $500. So what are you getting for that extra money? Usually, if you have similar specs, what you're getting is um, something that's more rugged. The most important thing is you're getting something that has better coatings so that when you look at nebulae, when you're looking at those faint galaxies, they just kind of pop out a little bit more. Maybe you live in a location that's darker skies, Western United States. Right less light pollution, so you already have more light to work with than those of us who live in more urban areas right. and have more light. So maybe you want to invest a little bit more in a set of binoculars that gives you a better field of view, has better coatings right. for nebulae. And the third thing is usually uh, you will get a sharper field of view. Now we, we, we talked about that field of view with the overwork and that there was a little bit of a drop off at about 85 to 90 percent with the Fujinon. 100% across the field of view, it's sharp. So if you're looking at a conjunction um, and, and they're right at the edge of that field of view, it's crisp all it's the way crisp. out the edge. Yeah, you're not gonna see any astigmatism, you're not gonna see any coma, it's just there from edge to edge. And, um, and usually when you want that, not just in binoculars, but in eyepieces, you've gotta pay for it. You gotta, yeah. <laughs> I've got a set of Ethos, I know you do too. They're not yeah. cheap. They, they can cost as much, if not more, than the telescope itself. Right. Now let's say you really want to go high end. Um, they make image stabilizing binoculars. Right. And you have a set here. Talk about those. Okay, so this is what I use more than anything that I have. And this is a 15 by 50 image stabilized binocular. Um, now what that means is, um, you can look at something in the distance and um, even at 10 times, you know, you'll notice a little bit of a shake, right? You know, and you'll maybe want to sit down and steady your hands. You can press this button and when you press that button, it stabilizes the image. Yeah. And uh, so the great thing about these is you can take them anywhere. They're small enough. You say they're actually, uh, they're not as bulky as the uh, 10 by 50s, they're just as long. And uh, you can take these anywhere. I've taken these to Chile. I took these with me to the uh, Great American Eclipse in Idaho. There's some dark sky observing there. I've taken these with me to Utah. And and the reason is, I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's only 15 by 50, but, you know, when I want to observe somewhere, I like to get in and out and I don't have to haul out a big scope and and I do find that under dark skies when I'm using these I, I don't feel like oh I wish I had more I, I have a good night all night observing with these 
and 15 by 50 is enough even in suburban skies I feel pretty satisfied I can I can come out here in the morning have a quick look at some Messier's and, um, and uh, feel pretty good about it yeah portable reasonably um, you know in terms of size reasonably small right and you do a lot of traveling again Chile Death Valley Idaho you can put these in inside of your bag when you're traveling you know or flying and uh, right. it won't take up a whole lot of space now you can um, um, you can get these used on cloudy nights or Astro Mart you know usually between seven eight hundred dollars something like that uh, brand new uh, I believe I, I paid twelve hundred so oh. you're, well, again, you're looking at a set of binoculars, high right. end, over a thousand bucks used, maybe knock four or five hundred bucks off of it. Right. So there's another image stabilized binocular, which is the king of image stabilized binoculars, the uh, 12, uh, I'm sorry, the 20 by 60 Zeiss. And guess how much that is? Oh boy. $8,000. $8,000. Wow. Yeah. So if you have an unlimited budget, you can right. spend several thousand. Again, if you're looking high end, in, this, in, the, in the case of these Canon binoculars, about 1,200 new. Uh, if you buy them used on Astro Mart or Cloudy Nights, you get them maybe four, four or five hundred dollars less. Right. You have an unlimited budget; you can spend up to eight thousand dollars on right. a pair of binoculars. And, and now, me personally, if I could afford an eight thousand dollar binocular, I would be a nervous wreck the whole time. Every, right. Everywhere I went, I would be obsessed about where's the binocular? Is it safe? I, I would almost be afraid to even get it out and use it. You know, right? Yeah, you I drop them. You need it's to over. put it in the bank. Yeah, eight grand gone just like that. Yeah. So. Again, but you can see a lot of different options depending on your the application and depending on you know what you're what you're looking to do the the use of them and then also your budget and then also your needs. So and speaking of image stabilized binocular, you know Canon makes these um, in different sizes. There's um, a discontinued version that's a 10 by 30, a 10 by 30 Canon image stabilized binocular that if your budget going back to the first video is less than three hundred dollars you may want to consider that because you can get it used between 200 and 300 and if you think yeah but it's only 10 by 30 you know i mean this is 10 by 50. yeah but you get stabilization and you will see a big difference with image stabilization when you're trying to split stars that maybe even with a 10 by 50 you can't do it because you're having to hand hold it with the 10 by 30, you can. So again, on Astromart, Cloudy Night, um, if you're interested in the, in the 10 by 30, uh, look for them there, usually between two or $300. So that's a good option for a starter set of right. binoculars. Image stabilizing, 10 by 30, around $200, somewhere right. in that range. So that right. might be a good option for getting started. The right. First time. Well, thanks again, Brian. Sure. Guys, I want to remind you that the Memphis Astronomical Society meets once a month, first Friday of the month, Christian Brothers University, at CC Hall, room 155, meeting starts at 8 o'clock p.m. Our website is memphisastro.org, and if you'd like to learn more, subscribe to this channel for more telescope tips. For Brian Hancock, I'm Jeremy Veldman. We'll see you guys on our next episode.